This video was made possible by the Orem's Comics patrons. Head on over to patreon.com slash Orem to become one today. Wonder Woman is an incredible character. Created by William Moulton Marston and Harry G. Peter, Princess Diana of Themyscira first appeared in 1941's All-Star Comics number 8. This was during the golden age of comics, a time where superheroes were abundant. Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, The Atom, The Flash, and so many others popped up during this era. But Wonder Woman filled a void that these heroes created. Diana brought something new to the table, a strong female superhero born of her own devices. Regardless of how Wonder Woman was canonically created, she left Paradise Island with one mission, to unify the world and birth an era of peace. Other female characters of Wonder Woman's time had much weaker motivations. Sandra Knight's Phantom Lady, for instance, was a character that essentially fought crime because she was a bored, rich socialite. She appeared in a whopping 23 issues of 1941's police comics from publisher Quality until she disappeared for a while upon its cancellation. You know, as phantoms are known to do. Eventually, Sandra was brought back into the limelight, mainly because Matt Baker's promiscuous drawings of the character proved to be quite popular. This type of art was known as good girl art, which frankly is a really gross term. Regardless, it was a real problem during the 40s. With comics like Torchy, Canteen, Kate, and Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, Matt Baker and his colleagues thrived drawing attractive young women, usually in skimpy or form-fitting clothing designed for erotic stimulation. That's the uh, definition of the term. It's not me being gross. Anyway, Wonder Woman was drawn in a somewhat different way. Yes, her costume fell privy to some of the same design trends that were popular back then, the exposed legs, high heels, and busty cleavage, but she was put in positions of power rather than shown as a sex object. Look at these covers from her first solo series. Riding a horse? Hell yeah! Throwing some construction equipment? Rad! And what's that? Wonder Woman for president? Enough said. Getting back on track here, the Phantom Lady was just one example of this trend of one-dimensional female characters in comics. Marla Drake's Miss Fury stumbled into crime fighting because... Oh no, it can't be! Another woman is wearing the same dress as her to a costume ball! Because of this, her housemaid suggested a different outfit, so Marla slipped into a very uncomfortable looking catsuit, and oh hey! Superpowers! Miss Fury didn't really have a mission, she just fought crime because why not? I guess. And then of course there's Betty and Veronica of Archie Comics. Arguably as popular as Wonder Woman at the time, these two were created solely as love interests for Archie Andrews, local redhead of Riverdale. Their first duo book was originally called Archie's Girls, Betty and Veronica, because that's all they were. Archie's girls. Now, this was, to be fair, a popular naming scheme for new side characters' stories, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, for instance, but this sort of pre-title kind of defeats the point of these books. A comic created to tell stories about side characters elsewhere becomes a minor title about that guy who you once saw in a Superman comic. Makes the book, and by proxy, the character less independent. That was a weird side tangent. Moving on. While most female characters of the 40s had poor motivations, Wonder Woman stood apart as a soldier of justice and peace. A huge part of her character nowadays is that she's a founding member of the Justice League, DC's flagship super team. But she didn't initially join the super team, or at least the original version of the super team, as a fighter. You see, in the Golden Age, Diana joined the Justice Society of America in All-Star Comics number 13, after proving herself as an equal and fighting alongside the rest of the JSA. She was offered the illustrious position of secretary by Hawkman. Fortunately, Diana got her chance to fight the good fight two issues later in All-Star Comics number 15, while her allies were nowhere to be found. After learning that they were all busy tracking down a supervillain, Diana decided to gather the girlfriends of the remaining JSA members, put them in gender-bent versions of their boyfriend's costumes, and crack the case before the men could. The story ends with Wonder Woman and company finding the culprit, Brainwave, who promptly meets his demise after getting spooked and falling out a window. Just a stand-up supervillain. With the exception of Hot Girl, Wonder Woman's team was then never seen as superheroes again. Just like that, they went back to being arm candy for their superhero boyfriends and nothing else. Even Hot Girl, an immortal Egyptian princess, was initially nothing more than Hawkman's girlfriend. Somehow, though, Diana Prince stood out. She wasn't the girlfriend of an already established superhero or a bored socialite who stumbled into crime fighting. She's a bona fide demigod born out of clay on an island removed from the rest of the world, filled with warrior women who want to save Earth from evil and usher in an era of lifelong peace. Despite a billion sexist ideals trying to put her down, she defied them and turned into the cultural icon she is today. Secretary for the JSA, leaving her island partly because she was falling for the first man she ever saw, Steve Trevor forming to the same skimpy costume trends as her forgettable peers, and even being called an anti-male lesbian by the infamous Frederick Wortham, solely because she's a powerful woman. The lesbian counterpart of Batman may be found in the stories of Wonder Woman, where Batman is anti-feminine, the attractive
attractive Wonder Woman and her counterparts are definitely anti-masculine. Wonder Woman has her own female following. They are all continuously being threatened, captured, almost put to death. Her followers are the Holiday Girls, i.e. the Holiday Girls, the Gay Party Girls, the Gay Girls. Wonder Woman refers to them as My Girls. That guy is just chock full of wisdom. But nothing stopped her. Even during the decline in the publication of superhero comics in the 50s, Diana was one of a handful of heroes to retain her own solo comic. Wonder Woman went on to become one of DC's holy trinity, alongside Batman and Superman, now three of the most recognizable superheroes of all time. In the grand scheme of things, Diana is probably the most recognizable female superhero ever. You don't hear about the likes of Phantom Lady or Miss Fury nowadays, but Wonder Woman, she's everywhere. The Brady Kids, Super Friends, her own show starring Linda Carter, countless appearances in the Justice League TV show, and a standalone animated movie in 2009 slowly made more and more aware of Wonder Woman's strength as a character. Not to mention her appearances in games like Justice League Heroes, Injustice, Little Big Planet 2, and Scribblenauts Unlimited, further extending her reach. And now, finally, she's the star of the first female-led big blockbuster superhero movie ever to be worth its salt. I can't imagine a better heroine to receive the honor. Except maybe Spider-Woman, but like, don't actually do that. I don't want you to ruin my favorite superhero. Not that they ruined Wonder Woman with the movie. It, it was okay. I don't know, I've, I've dug myself a hole. She's even served as a symbol for feminists, pacifists, and LGBT rights, appealing to everyone, becoming a strong, relatable role model. Honestly, any female superhero could have become what Wonder Woman is today, but Marston was the man who had the brilliance to create a hero so strong during a time when other female heroes were so weak. At the end of the day, she broke free from the sometimes literal chains that bound her, defied a generation of superheroes, and became, well, quite a wonder. I am so sorry. Anyway, hope you learned something interesting in this video. There is so much intrigue in Wonder Woman's character, and I wanted to focus on a part that I feel isn't talked about much. To me, it's so wildly interesting that out of all the characters created in the 40s, Wonder Woman stood out and became one of the most recognizable icons in pop culture. And honestly, it's ridiculous that it took this long to get at least a passable superhero movie starring a woman. What do you all think? Am I crazy for thinking that Wonder Woman is an incredible superhero who stood apart from the crowd? Probably not, but I'll stop leading the question. Anyway, like I mentioned at the top of the show, we do have a Patreon, so if you want to go the extra mile to support this channel, you can head on over to patreon.com slash orum to get all kinds of cool rewards. For as low as $1 per weekly video, you can get super rad pictures of my cat, or access to a Discord server, or the Patreon feed, all kinds of stuff. It's over there. I won't bore you with the details. Go check it out. That all being said, thank you so much for watching. Next time, I save the state of this channel with the power of love.